Greetings and salutations, listener. It is I, Eric J. Checky, joined as always by some fuck in a chair next to me, the boy. Hi. And this is the Two Nerds Podcast, here bringing you all the nerdliest nerds to have come out of a Willy Wonka box of pink and purple. If you click the links in the descriptions, you could buy my books. What? Or Shining Wazato Super Blizzard Bandcamp Merchandise O Rama, he gave us our title music, and that is Let's, Let's Get, Get Hardcore. Hardcore. We like to say it in tandem, because it makes our wieners hard. Shh, you're not supposed to tell them that part. So, anyway. Yep. Today on the show, we don't really have much of a topic to fill an entire hour, so we're just going to bounce around a bit. First things first, um, because, uh, let's be frank, it's going to be quick, we wanted to talk a little bit about the stuff at E3 that caught our specific attentions. Um, there isn't much. I'm going to be completely honest. I mean, there was a lot of stuff, but, like, the big titles that everyone seems to be freaking out over, and I'm going to try not to do uh, a Superboy Prime voice, because that's legitimate reasons to be, you know, like, excited for something, but it's, like, five games with a female protagonist that are in slightly different settings. Mm, I didn't even hear about that. Yeah, they all look very interesting, but it's like, oh, a trailer... This tells me fuck all. Uh, there's a new Shenmue game possibly coming out. They're Which doing, they're doing like a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter or some bullshit for it. Yeah, already double, triple funded. You can't see me making jerk off motions, but trust me that I am. Not not a Shenmue guy. Um, I've seen that game played. I don't know why anyone ever got past the first part, the part where you're in a hallway with doors, where you're in your house. I don't know how anyone ever got past that. I suspect it's because they had a Dreamcast and they already paid the $200 for that. So you might as well play the game you got. I mean, maybe. And we'll find out soon enough if the new the Shenmue... Fuck, we will. <laughs> Not us, specifically. Oh, oh the like general through the you, internet. Yeah, fuck sure. you, douchebag. <laughs> if the new game doesn't hold up, if the new game isn't hailed as being as visionary and amazing as the previous, as the previous Shenmue games... So, I, I understand past that point, they're very deep. It's like Grand Theft Auto if it weren't like a giant tongue-in-cheek uh, dick joke. Well, they, they were, they're were they way more deep than the Grand Theft Auto game. Right, right. They were ridiculously scary deep for the time. And yeah. They, and actually, scary deep even for now. Every drawer in the game had stuff in it. And while I appreciate that from a design standpoint, I don't know if you can call that depth. I think you can. I I would call it depth of an obsessive compulsive degree. Sure, but like if you tell me a game is deep, I'm gonna be like, oh, like the story's really interesting, or you can really get into your customization. Motherfucking Shenmue wears the same goddamn brown ass jacket, <laughs> is the same that, stupid is that haircut. His name? No, it's not. It's like Motherfuck- Junichiro or something. Motherfucking Shenmue. <laughs> I, I don't remember the character's name, but whatever. It's, and it, it's just it, Halo it doesn't is, afraid of anything. It's never wowed me. Like, I always heard people talking about it back when it fucking came out, and I was like, I do not understand why the fuck you guys care. I never, uh, full disclosure, I never played it, because I didn't own a Dreamcast. My brother-in-law did. Um, I think he played it. I think he loved the fucking thing, but I don't honestly remember. Well, I credit to you if you do, whatever. If you like yeah, I'm sure it's a really fine. good game. I just, just don't, we haven't nerd. It's, I just, don't it's give big a nerd fuck. news. Yeah, it is. It's huge nerd news. It's a bunch of, like... They're like uh, the Nier franchise, N E N I E R. Um, that that's they're getting another game in that, and that's supposed to be so fucking awesome. And like all of the fucking Wii news, the Wii U news, there seems like a lot of cool shit coming out. But I ain't got a Wii U, and I ain't buying one. No, fuck you. I ain't buying that console. Fuck. I just I really hate that controller. Yeah. And I really hate the fact that you can only ever have one of them. You know, I'll, I'll be perfectly fucking honest with you. If you didn't have to use the controller for some games that are upper tier. Or, if all more four motherfuckers could use the controller, then I might have bought one. When we were a little more flush with cash, instead of going the, the Smash Brothers on the two DS's route, we might have gone, you know what, fuck it, let's get a Wii U. But that's stupid. Yeah, I'm not. That's like... I'm not, I fucking hate that controller. Like, when you were a kid, it was a big deal about being player one, but for no fucking reason. It was just stupid kid, King of the Hill, bragging rights. Now, I'd like to play the real game, please. Oh, <laughs> fuck you, the rest of my friends. That's just that's just shitty. Yeah, I mean that's where this is one of the things the two nerds are in complete agreement on. I'm not fucking buying a Wii U. 
I might buy your next console. Yeah, I might. I looked, all the games look fucking fantastic. Do not mistake me at all. I don't... I just don't want to give my money to that shit. I could, I could, I could die a million years from now without ever hearing the phrase, you're a kid now, you're a squid now, again, and I would be okay with that, but that game looks really cool. It's just, I, that controller, man. It's not even that it's motion controls or that it's gimmicky, it's that it's being a dick. For me, it's it's that it's gimmicky. I I don't give a shit about the gimmick. If I gave a shit about the gimmick, I would I would probably. Well, but I said that about the Wii, and then I tried it, and I was like, oh, uh, this is actually pretty cool. I have to be aware of myself. I don't like the gimmick right now either. But if I had it in my hands, I might be like, oh, well, okay, this is pretty neat. I never played. Have you noticed? Never played many Wii games. Yeah. No, just never played many Wii well, games. Well, when we did, it was like with the controllers. Yeah, I played it with a fucking N sixty four controller because I'm a human being with hands. Um, GameCube controllers, I think. Yeah. Because the N64 had the dick. Yeah, yeah no, it was, an, it was a GameCube controller. Because <laughs> that also had a dick, but it was a less mighty one. Um, uh, but uh, Fallout 4 is going to do DLC on consoles. Not, not even DLC. Uh, 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 yeah, well, yeah, mods. mods on consoles. I'm sure that's what you meant. Yeah, that's what I meant. Uh, Xbox so having backward compatibility coming. The Xbox that, One. You know what? Big. That would be super cool. Here's the problem. All my fucking save files are on my 360. Why do I care? Well, yeah, but at the same time, it's like, okay, hey, I'm going to get ready to start a new game here, start a new game there. Or, more accurately, fucking sweet shit, I just bought some old school games, and I can play them on my Xbox One now. And watch their graphics be gloriously shitty compared to the other Xbox. Because I've played a couple Xbox One games... And I, I don't even know where they stand on the prettiness factor of that system's compatibility. I understand the, P, the PS4 is more powerful, nerds. Please go to the comments and tell me how wrong I am. Um, but I fucking... That, that console can do some pretty shit. It can. Um, we, we do not have the games, by the way. Dragon Age, not a... No, no, no. But, not a technical but marvel. Arkham Knight, uh, at the very least, looks amazing. I haven't played it. Um, I don't know when I'm going to either. I... No, I can totally understand. Somebody, I don't know, I did, like, I just didn't get hyped for this game. I was so anti-hyped for the last one, which I understand is not a canonical part of the series. It was like New Vegas. Yeah. But I like, still am like, eh, eh, eh. Yeah, I can understand. I, but, you know, I mean, New Vegas was canonical, and so was this one. It was just oh, not yeah. in order. It right. It was the next number. And, and it sequel. wasn't the same company. And Yeah, it was a different, a different building house sure. going. Um... They, unless I'm wrong, they threw a little light shade the other company's way in the opening hours of Arkham Knight. Yeah. Just, just a little light shading in. Um, you hype it all for Deus Ex? Do you give a shit about that game? I could not care less. I don't... I've never cared about Deus Ex. You would think I would. It's a fucking really amazing series with a lot of um, in-depth, real moral choice without, you know, the big moral choice slider that says, you're an asshole, you're a saint. It's just, here are some decisions, make them, um, which I like, and I like I like it in concept. I've just never fucking played these games. Um, I had a mild interest in the last one, but it gave me the information that has been the problem with all games that are in that style, and that is, it tells you there are several different ways you can complete the game, doing it stealthy, doing it this way, doing it that way. What it means is there's one right way to do the game, and we will punish you for all others. That's not what I've heard at all. That is the but opposite. No, I mean about the combat system, not the moral choices. That's not what I've heard at all. I've heard stealth is fucking impossible. That's not what I've heard at all. It's like a run and gun game. That's not what I've heard at all. Who all did right. you hear that from? I, I don't remember. It's I'm been, talking about like, but they were like professional game reviewer opinions. Well, uh, you know, I'm wrong on a podcast. That's fair, whatever. But I, even still, the sunglasses implants really... And, and, <laughs> and the main character. Like, I don't know. I can't... Look, okay, Metal Gear Revengeancing. Uh, you're almost right. Revengeance. Un, un, unvengeize. Metal? The backstabbing. Uh, the one that's fucking Fruit Ninja. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Fucking Fruit Ninja. I couldn't. Th that game is not very serious. It's not. But I can't take Raiden seriously as a character in that because he's so fucking try hard. And, and the Deus Ex guy. He's like the triest of hearts. Just oh my god. Like, but uh, you'd think I'd love this series. It deals with, like, it delves into, like, transhumanism and what exactly, by what measure is a real human stuff I'm very interested in. And the sequel seems to be delving even farther into that and into some 
into some really interesting social commentary and a bunch of stuff that you'd think I, I just don't fucking I can't be I can't be fucked. I don't care. It, Why I, don't I care, I listener? Think, dude, I think it's the protagonist. Like, man, maybe maybe not. Maybe you're still living in the '90s where Neo is the be all end all of coolness. But late '90s, early 2000s, mm-hmm. whatever the fuck. I think 2001. Neo Neo's not. Keanu Reeves is a pretty cool guy. Look, Keanu's okay, but <laughs> he, you know, I like Keanu a lot better than I like his characters. I'll put it that way. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Um, who's been who's maintained nicety through a lot of really <laughs> shitty experiences. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I just like that dude. Like, I don't go. Yeah, I can't wait to play this game where I'm a douche. Fuck yeah, I'm I'm that douche. <laughs> Fucking look at me. <laughs> I'm such a douchebag, you guys. And I voluntarily played a douche in Mass Effect. I play, I went full Paragon run. Because in the first game, I tried to do a little bit more of what I would do, and I didn't have the points to pull anything off. So in the first game, I was mostly like, I think I ended up about half of each, honestly. I didn't have the points to do shit. So second and third game, I went full Paragon. And I was such a tool bucket. But that was, my, that was my character. He was a tool bucket. That's his, that's his deal. He's a tool bucket who believes he's always right and just happens to be correct about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't mean a douche like that. I mean, I mean in the try-hard way. He's, he's just trying so hard to be cool. He's an edgelord. Yeah, edgelord. That was that term you came up with I fucking love. No, all right. I would love to be the responsible party for that. That's a 4chan thing. Oh, okay. Well, regardless, it's really, it's really fucking quality. Yeah, uh, it's that's, fucking that's quality terminology. <laughs> it's, it's, edgelord. It is, it is beautiful, and that's why I use it. Yeah, it's just I am good the, stuff. I am the edgiest dude to exist. I am the king of all edgy. I am the edgelord. I, I mean, I'm a goth guy. I appreciate some brooding and some, you know, stoicism, and and I like badasses. But like, man, tone it down. You're, you are so fucking cool that you don't have. Eyes, you have sunglasses. Your eyes are sunglasses, and it's not a joke. <laughs> if it was a joke, I'd be like, this guy's eyes are sunglasses, I'm fucking sold. But it's not. No. He's like, please do not make fun of my sunglasses eyes. I am far too cool to be made fun of. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> you have managed to take that one tiny point of the character and and unmake him through that, through well, that and one there's pivot other, point. There's other shit, but like... I, you just you didn't sell me on the visual, so I don't want to go into it. Maybe that's it. I I don't know why I don't care. You'd think I would fucking. You'd think I would be so into this game, especially because, you know, back in the day it was a PC you know shooter, yeah. which I prefer PC shooters to console ones. Mouse and keyboard master race. I'm sorry, um, but I just don't. I don't. I can't be fucked. I cannot possibly be possessed of a single fuck about that game. And I I wish that were different. I do. Um, there's other cool games that are coming out. The Last Guardian's finally coming out. I don't. Uh, for those of you at home who don't live with me, um, when we went to see a movie, and the trailer before that movie was for Chappie, the words that came out of my mouth as I pointed to the screen, do you, what were they? Um, that robot's dead or something? No, I said I don't want to go see that movie and cry about that dead-ass robot. <laughs> and I have not. Maybe Chappie doesn't die. But, I mean, I, you know, that's uh, the, what they, that trailer... They, they, sold, they sold me a, you know, come for the xenophobia, stay for the heartwarming overcoming of your own xenophobia through the humanization of this robot, leave for the dying of the robot. And that's, like, the la- uh, that's the Guardian or whatever the fuck... The Last Guardian. The yeah. Griffin game. The Griffin That game. Griffin is dead as it's, fuck. It's from the people who made the fucking... The fucking... The horse is dead as fuck game. Yeah, the horse is dead as fuck game. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't... No, thank you. I, I could find other stuff to cry about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that's about it. I'm fucking... I bet it's an incredible game. I just have priorities. That's all. Right? Uh, um, I, I, I'm curious to see what happens with Unravel purely based on the awkward charisma of that... What is it? Swedish guy? No oh, God, little yeah, the little, the little doll. He was um, so nervous. I am actually Sweet, pure cinnamon roll, too good for this world. Really fucking hyped for Doom. Uh, and that being said, like this is my level of hype. Woo, that looks pretty cool. I might play that. Uh, <laughs> like I, I am so, un- and this is coming from a guy who's like was playing Doom when I was old enough to reach a keyboard. I, I, I'm not hyped. Not, I'm not. You know Doom what? Doom three After- is so shitty. I can't. I but can't. Bethesda has it now. And Bethesda loves things. 
That's true. And they treat them so nicely. Like I want to, I want to try out their Wolfenstein games. It looks pretty cool. But that's true. I might, if he buys it, I'll play it. Yeah, I'll probably roll around to playing Arkham King or whatever the fuck it's called. Arkham King. That's. Oh, I, I'm trying to pace that game out, listener. I, I swear, because first off, they said it's the last one in the series. And I, I fucking love these games, as for all the reasons you might expect. I've talked about how I've loved Assassin's Creed. I talk about, I, and we all know our, my opinion on Batman, don't we, listener? And this is Assass- This is Batman Creed, and this is such a good version. It's done so well. It's an amazing game. Well, and you know, um, this game has had a history with me. This series, and I think that's probably a lot of my trepidation in playing this. Because the first one fucked me and made me play it again. His save file got corrupted at, like, 90% of the story complete. Like, second to last boss. I'm not even playing. And there's not much you do between that fight and the last boss. He's right. I had to play the whole fucking game again. So I had to put that shit down and walk away. And we talked about my problems with um, Arkham Arkham City City on the podcast before. I I like that it's open world, but I don't like that it's super... That there's not... The, the stuff to do is a little tedious and that landmarks that aren't like Mario 64 paintings are a little hard to discern. You have a map and the map's pretty good, but... And I'm going to tell you right now, the landmarks are still not hard to discern, but fucking it's Gotham. There's, a, there's an aesthetic... The whole city follows that aesthetic. It takes you a minute to get your bearings. But the waypoint system and the map system are really good. Yeah. And Well, the waypoint system was fine. It was just when I was free roaming and trying to do shit. You know, I kind of felt like, eh. And, and there was that portion of the city that was blocked off by fucking sniper guards or in gun turrets and shit. Well, yeah, that's because that's it was Arkham City, not Gotham City. Right. Well, and I, every time I got close to that, and I was, like, just trying to get from point A to point B, and they were like, nope, you gotta find a douchebag way and go around. I'm like, God, son of a bitch. It reminded me of the hills in, like, pre-Skyrim games. Yeah, and you know what? Um, that's, not a, that's not a problem. The whole... Gotham City is open. It is Gotham fucking City. Yeah. Um, the, the only... And I've, I'm about four hours into the game. Um, because I bought it, played it for a few hours, and then something made me quit. Um, I'm gonna be completely honest with you, uh, listener. That Batmobile, and it looks amazing, don't get me wrong, I fucking love it. It's so cool looking. Uh, oh boy. This is, you know what, before you finish your story, I don't think the listener has ever heard this story. About why we call these things this thing. Okay, so, you tell the origin story of the yeah. term Tiny Bronco. Well, and those of you listening, um, and since we're mentioning it, uh, Square is making a remake of Final Fantasy VII, finally. Um, go out and buy it when it comes out, not that you weren't going to already, but they said they're going to do five and six if this sells well. So, if you love me, and I know you do, please buy that game. Because he wants the opportunity to buy a remake of Final Fantasy VI. Like... It would be all his Christmases come at once. Yeah, that's... I just... I, I know they're saying they're going to change the story a little bit, and they're probably going to do that with six too. I don't give a fuck. I love all of those people except for Locke. The end. New I want story, that. New story change. Locke's everywhere. He's in everything. Yeah, every character is Locke. Yeah. Kafka especially Locke. Yeah. Okay, well, fuck. But, uh... <laughs> you know what? With the people at the helm, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but, so, in Final Fantasy VII... Uh, you're... Go ahead, but I have a question to ask you when you're done. Okay, yeah, sure. Hold up that pinky and as a reminder. Um, in Final Fantasy VII, when you are escaping a certain part of the plot with Sid, you have to get on his tiny, shitty plane. It's like a precursor to getting your actual airship, which is pretty, you know, staple in a lot of Final Fantasy games. It's a... what amounts to a hovercraft called the Tiny Bronco. It controls, like... Balls. Uh, just ass balls. And it's so fucking slow. Just absolutely crawling. And if you have to cross any large section of the map to do like a side quest before you get to the end of disc one, where shit happens, um, it's you, you are there for like 15 minutes just moving across the map. And it's not a big map. 
So, as I was moving, as I want to do for anyone who's watched me play a game, I composed a little song that goes roughly, Tiny Bronco, Tiny Bronco, I fucking hate the Tiny Bronco, so on and so forth. Uh, <laughs> so, years later, um, when I watched you playing Mass Effect... And I was doing the Mako sections, uh, the the car in the first game that they shove down your throat at certain parts of the game. You have to use it, and you don't have another option, and it's... It controls like balls. I I hate its controls. I hate the combat in it. The, the Mako from, from Mass Effect 1 is hands down the worst part of that game. And Not I, even just my least favorite, the worst. I watched him uh, playing it, and I'm like, what tiny Bronco shit vessel are you touring the world in? <laughs> And thus it was named. Yeah, the then, Mako is now the Tiny Bronco. Any fucking car that sucks is the Tiny Bronco. and Which is fun, because it's fun to have memes. And that, uh, my song is a little different. It's it's usually just, God, I hate you, Tiny Bronco. Yeah. <laughs> Said in a very soulful voice when the Tiny Bronco has flipped, or the Tiny Bronco has decided that it needs to go in a circle now. Usually uh, to the tune of that Elton John song. Yep. <laughs> um... But, uh, so, bringing that, uh, full circle into what we were talking about before, the Batmobile, spiritual successor to the Tiny Bronco? No. It is, it's not Tiny Bronco bad. Don't get me wrong. It's Bronco class. It's in the same fucking, like, It's like a you know, medium Bronco. You know how they make the, like, the Tiburon and the Tiburon XL and the fucking Tiburon experience or whatever? <laughs> It is Bronco class. It is the same class of vehicle. <laughs> it's not as bad. The problem is that they won't let me leave it the fuck alone. Okay, the fucking Batmobile in chase mode controls like I am seriously driving with my penis. <laughs> I mean, just trying, like, committed to it, too. Like, I've got a little rope around <laughs> strapping it to the wheel, and I'm like... Thrusting left and right angrily trying to chase down Firefly or whatever. And and I alright, I fucking love Firefly as a villain. This is a minor spoiler, he's in the game, but actually, I, can I ask for another spoiler? Um, hold on. Okay. I need to finish this. Okay. Um and I can't enjoy the Firefly sections because I have to fucking chase him doing sharp corners in fucking alleys in a car that drives like I'm driving it with my dick. You know, that's my problem with most quote-unquote realistic driving racing games, is they're just, like, they're not fun. And you know what? It's... The thing is, it's really hard to fuck up with that. I... The thing that made me have to give it a rest was I lost Firefly in one of those chase sequences. And that really pisses me off, because it, it breaks my immersion. It breaks my immersion. I'm fucking Batman. Yeah, Batman wouldn't lose Firefly. No. He's fucking Firefly. Um... But that's not the thing that frustrated me. Guys, Batman's gone all retarded. Guys, do crimes! <laughs> Interesting side note with that, but it's complete spoilers, I can't tell you. <laughs> um, so, here's the thing. That's not, if, if, that is, if that is all that happened, if I had just been playing around the game and did that, I'm like, nah, whatever. You know what? Sometimes even Batman fucks up. It's just, you know, an interesting note later when I do catch Firefly and punch his stupid fucking, punch his stupid fucking turkey neck in. Um, that's, that's, that's cool. That's fine. It's the, all the fucking Riddler challenges are in the Batmobile. Wow. They fucking, they fell in love with this stupid fucking car. They, and this is a car that's not bad. It's not that bad. I need to stress that. They're making me hate it because they're making me do puzzles in it. Complex fucking platforming, 3D platforming fucking puzzles in this stupid car. The car jumps. Uh, yeah, it's the fucking Batmobile. It has a fucking jet engine in it. Yeah, it jumps. It turns All into right, a fucking. No. It turns into a fucking tank and like, like its wheels go sideways and it turns into a tank and fires shit. It's really cool. Yeah, shut up for a second. This car jumps. That sold me on this game more than anything else I've heard about this game. Oh, not... This shitty car that you could barely control with your dick. Has a jump button. No, 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 not like a, not like a straight up. Choo -choo. No, I'm sure. It, it's like it's like when you it's have, like, psh, yeah, you got yeah. you got no. It's um, it's like you got a ramp shape. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's that's less awesome. Yeah, you got a ramp shape, <laughs> but it's really good at ramping shit, and it 
And there's certain periods where you have to, like, go real fast, and then when you jump, you can angle the car up, kind of, to get a little air, right and then land your first front wheels on the thing, and, like... <laughs> if I were them, I would have been, like, Batman puts in these, like, fucking struts underneath the Batmobile. Yeah, like, and like... like, pull a lever, and they Like a fucking down. low rider, just... Yeah. Choonch, choonch. Yeah, yeah. But in the back, so that he like, gets fucking flung ass <laughs> over tea kettle forward. And, alright, <laughs> kudos to them, they apparently recognize how fucking hard this thing is to drive in when I'm, when I'm having to do a race. Because for some reason the Riddler's decided he wants to do races now. Um, Are you in there, Cape Crusader? I just saw a lot of NASCAR and I got a new idea. <laughs> um, it's just, and I have to like, there's a point where I have to fucking do a loop. You know, to burn my afterburner and do a loop around a fucking tunnel. Because it's, you know, death water or whatever. You don't, in the last game, if you fail the Riddler challenge, you die. And they do the little cutscene where the Riddler mocks you for dying, and then they reload. Okay, here's the thing. That's fine. I have failed as a player. Mock me for, for failing. And then we reload, and Batman, who is Batman, does the thing right. Um, this game, they don't. They just start you over again. The car just pops back like it's a fucking Mario Kart. It just pops back onto the course and goes again, and the Riddler mocks you. And the game just continues. So now, fucking Dirt Man, who has taken Batman's place at the wheel, because <laughs> I am not that good at this car yet, have failed the Riddlers. It's a stupid little, like, the, the race thing wasn't that bad. I failed a couple times because I didn't understand what I needed to do, but I learned and it was fun. Um, the, the, there's a little, like, slower jumping puzzle where I gotta, like, do change things in the environment. It's kind of like the, the speeder races in the Knights of the Old Republic 2. Um, the first one was, the first one was basically exactly that. Yeah, I like The those. second one's uh, very much just a puzzle that I have to maneuver the car through. And Batman's, because you can remote control the car and, and drive it while Batman's just sort of standing there like, like fucking checking his cell phone or whatever. <laughs> uh, it's a bunch of crooks. The fuck's Batman doing? I keep playing his Nintendo DS. What? Hey, get on Wi-Fi. See if you can fight Batman. <laughs> <laughs> and then the car just runs them the fuck over. Because <laughs> it does that. It has, like, anti-personnel stuff, so instead of dying, they get, like, repelled by taser bolts. <laughs> it, the car's fucking cool. That's why I hate that the game's making me hate it, because they made me do this intricate fucking jump puzzle in it with fucking physics stuff, and I had to, like... There was a teeter-totter that I had to ramp off of quickly enough to get over on the other side, and I must have flipped the fucking Batmobile, like, 12 or 13 times trying to do it, and every fucking time he mocked me for flipping the Batmobile. You know what? I think Same I can make this like, better for you. you flipped the car? Maybe I need a new nemesis. I think I can make this better for this you. This is Batman! This breaks my immersion so completely hard! Restart! I... Sh I can fail. That's fine. I'm shitty at stuff... Batman failing breaks my fucking immersion. Let's, but here, I think I can make this better, alright? The Riddler notices over the last two games that Batman has not really used his car. So, at this point, having been bested by Batman both in intelligence and ability to handle himself, the Riddler goes, where can I fuck with Batman? And then goes, wait a minute, he hasn't touched his fucking car in two games, however long amount of time that is. Like, half an hour, if I understand correctly. Oh. Uh, a course of, like, two years, actually. Oh, okay, cool. So, yeah, then the Riddler goes, you know what? Let's make him drive shit. Let's Apparently see. he didn't like doing that. Yeah. And then later, Riddler, Ah, I figured out why he's terrible at it. Ah. I'll for twist it to a stick. I can't handle it. <laughs> it's just, oh, God. And it's tiny mechanics things. Like, there was a... Almost intentionally designed to be annoying. I, I can, I swear, part of that game. Where, in that jumping puzzle, there's a point where you have to have Batman get out and go stand on a, one of the little Riddler buttons while he, while he remote drives the Batmobile for the rest of the puzzle. Because he needs to stand on that button so you have control of the thingamajig. Okay, here's the issue with that. Every time I fucking failed, it, you fail by basically, you know, fucking up the jump puzzle and falling back down to the floor. I have to go around and go back up through a very, like, narrow bridge. Right at the end of that bridge is that button where Batman's standing. So every time I am still remote driving, get up to the bridge, Batman jumps because this is a mechanic in the game because they want to make it look cool. Every time he gets near enough to the Batmobile while you're remote driving, he just hops in because why wouldn't he? 
That yeah. <laughs> so it's Batman's like do 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 carefully maneuvering. Now hop in the Batmobile, yay! <laughs> I have to fucking have him get out, and sometimes he would jump back in. God damn it, Batman! No, bad Batman! Go jump! Go stand on your button! <laughs> oh, and I had I had to give the game a little bit of a rest because that's I can tell. I they show you how many different challenges are left because you get a little upgrade point every time you do one. They show me how many Riddler challenges are left. I know they're all going to be in the fucking car. They're all going to be in the fucking car. And I fucking I do oh man because I'm doing it I'm beating the Riddler fuck you Enigma I've killed I I've, I've whooped your ass twice now I'm doing it a third time but it's gonna be hard this time guys and I gotta space it out because the mechanics on that car in regular play are not bad enough to be notable they're actually pretty fun because you're whipping around Gotham City at lightning speed and the car's hard to control because you're going super fucking fast. And sometimes you're a tank. And in combat, it actually works pretty well. It's a pretty good combat thing when you're in, like, battle mode. Uh, but I fucking... Oh, God, no. The puzzles? I gotta, I gotta space those out. Because I will stab a motherfucker if, if, I, if I end up hating the Batmobile from Arkham, from Arkham Knight, which is objectively a cool thing. Because the Riddler made me do complex 3D platforming, which is always challenging. Batman and, gets back home. Never driving that thing again. Nigma wins this time. He's not the Joker he's allowed. I, uh... I like... I love that you do that voice when this is Kevin Conroy. No, yeah. Well, my Kevin Conroy's kind of rusty right now. I haven't heard him in a while. Hmm. It uh, just... It sounds like me trying really hard. I, I just... I, I, I know I went completely off the rails there, but I had to get that off my chest. Thank you, listener, for listening. That is your description, after all. Um, now, I had a question, and then you had something you wanted to ask me. I'll ask my question first. Uh, is Killer Moth in the game? I don't know yet. All right. Man Bat is. Ooh, I fucking love Man Bat. I know you love Killer Man-Bat. Moth way below Man Bat in terms of my favorite fucking Batman. There's villains. like three other really cool spoilers that I cannot give you. I fucking love Man Bat. Man Bat's like he's my homie. That's a whole side quest is because it's in this continuity. First time Man Bat showed up. Oh yeah, get the Man Bat origin story. He has no f- Batman has no fucking idea who it is. Because like, <laughs> I was just flying around Gotham, I grappled to a ledge and was heading up. You know, doing. <laughs> and the I, Man Bat was like yoink. Well, I I was like. Doing, I press the button to rocket boost me up off the ledge so I could just glide because that's what I do. That's just that's how you do. Sure. Um, and I was like, just just casually, I was just playing the game, and suddenly like we went, we smooth transitioned completely into a cutscene, and Man Bat was just like popped over the side of the ledge like a jump scare from Five Nights at Freddy's and screamed directly <laughs> in my face. And Batman was just like, the fuck? <laughs> like he really, he flipped out a little. Who <laughs> wouldn't? Oh, that's fantastic. That's great. Um, then you had a question for me. <clears throat> Here's the change. Are you ready? All right. The change for Final Fantasy VI's story. Okay. They've taken Locke out. Okay. Replaced him with lightning. Your thoughts? Yeah, that's fine. She's just bland. Okay. She's just girl cloud. Because that's that's a very popular theory on the the change they're making to Final Fantasy story. Cloud and his twin sister Lightning. <laughs> Whatever. She they is are, just Girl Cloud. They're, they're lightning fanboys at that fucking publishing house. They put her in everything. It, it's, it's not even them. It's it's the fucking designer. It's Nomura. I, you know, whatever. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, you sure you want Nomura's hands on Final Fantasy VI anyway? What, you know, I don't hate what he did with the characters in Dissidia. And I imagine that's what they mean when they're talking about the story getting changed. They're probably going to refine it so it makes more sense. Or has more personal stuff. Because you've got VO now. You know, you have the option to make this story more personal. There'll probably be fewer Wolseleyisms. Oh, God, yeah. Well, for Seven's sake, I fucking hope so. But yeah, the, the six <laughs> I would love it if that game were coherent. <laughs> Shit. There were apostrophes in that game that had no reason to exist. But, uh... Well, like the one in Shit, coincidentally. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh... The Final Fantasy VI translation on the Game Boy Advance takes out all the Wolseyisms, and that's fine. Whatever. There's something to be said for his translation of the script. It's got some character to it. So does the Advance version. I'm okay. All right. Two sides of the same coin, basically. Um, and I like that coin, because that coin is money. I don't like money that much, but... I was just this has kind of gotten away from me. What other games? Uh... <laughs> you just, I've lost control of this joke! Abort! Abort! <laughs> It's Rock Band 4. Um, that's going to be cool. We get all our DLC eventually. Um, 
that's nice. The stuff from Rock Band 1 and 2, 3 pending. Even the network stuff, they're working on that too, so that's good news. Yep. Um, trying to remember other shit I saw that I gave a crap about. <clears throat> Star Wars Battlefront, I, I haven't played one in a long ass time, but it was fun. Uh, if it comes across my Xbox, I might grab it. Uh, yeah, you're not wrong. Sorry, I just saw a picture online that I fucking I need to know more about because I don't I don't give a shit about Killzone. I never played it. Uh, it looked. I mean, you're fighting evil alien dudes in gas masks. I mean, okay, sure, whatever. I don't give a fuck. But also, apparently, your new female lead is uh, Native American Yagret from Game of Thrones. Yeah, this is one of those games with. Uh, you didn't mention she was fucking Yagret with fire in her hair. She even wields a bow. Yeah. I fucking love archers. There's a chick. In all games, especially shooters, I love archers. I don't know why. It's just really cool. There's this a chick is... with a robot buddy in I am now. game. I'm, I'm fucking six times more hyped for this game now. I might actually want to play this now. Holy oh, the shit, Raider this sequel. looks really cool. They talked about the new Tomb Raider sequel. What is it like post... Have they, like, uh, I guess... Given the fucking, like, way this looks, it looks like maybe it was... Like they, the aliens won or whatever, and this takes place later. Cause you're in the woods. I have no idea what he's talking about. A kill zone. Fuck you. Um. In a movie we watched about the Titanic, a documentary, when they talked about the area where the Titanic went down, they called it a kill zone. I speculate. This is what he's referring to. I'm gonna let that stand on its own. Uh, I'm also excited for the new Tomb Raider game because uh, the, the first one, the Tomb Raider was like, remake, was really was your good. Jam. <laughs> was your jiggity jam? I was playing like a really like a strong battle warrior chick who starts out as not a battle warrior chick, and I get to see her become one, which is really cool. And I was fucking, I was an archer, which always wins points with me. Like I, I'm not joking. I fucking love archers in video games. I kind of want to play that game. I mean, not only because it looks like a good game, but I want to see if there's that Ezio split. Like, your Ezio was super into assassination and sneakery and hidden blade stabs and shit like that, whereas mine ran around the streets with a gigantic fuck-off hammer and bashed the skulls of anybody who disagreed with him for long enough. I want to see if something happens in Tomb Raider where I'm just like, well, you you used your bow for stuff. I just throw grenades at everything. You can. Right, but like, like what if... The bow's entirely optional. You can use a fucking Kalashnikov machine gun and a I want to see if that thing. happens, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and I want to see what the, the, the vast difference is. It's it's a smaller version of the what Mass Effect What situation. he's saying is he wants to see my extreme butt hurt when he's not playing it right. <laughs> that too. I know, I really do like those little differences in gameplay. I do too. I like the, I like the option. Yeah. I'm always going to take, if sneaking mission is an option, look, I'm always going to take sneaking mission. Unless the stealth is a frustratingly shitty experience. Even if it's mildly shitty, I will take stealth. I fucking, it's cool. I like it. I'm a bit more discerning, and that's why I'm not a big fan of the Assassin's Creed franchise in general. But like in the in the they Arkham don't do games, stealth very well. they don't. They 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 don't. Um, in the Arkham games, I like doing stealth. I loved it when I got through a room without having to punch the fuck out of somebody, and they were all just strung up on little gargoyles like crazy Slenderman Christmas presents. Mm-hmm. Um, I love mm. that too, and they make that even more fun in the new game. Even more fun. Until Snake Eater frustrated the fuck out of you. I played that game, like, mostly stuff. Remember too. when I mentioned frustratingly shitty experience will make me stop? That's Snake Eater. Yeah. Snake Eater is a frustratingly shitty experience. That fight, that fight is really it fucking was, it was the fear. The, the, was it the fear? Yeah. Yeah. I fucking hate that fight. The fear! That, yeah, that guy. I fucking hate that guy. With I hate that guy so much, much, I stopped playing that game. Which That's how much I fucking hate that guy. And I like Metal Gear. He's fairly easy if you're not trying to get his camo. But and I really why? wanted his camo. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Because this guy awesome camo. So, yeah, it's it's so fucking frustrating. I got B-Man's gear. <laughs> Plus one to B's, motherfucker. <laughs> he was... Look, he's B-Man. I don't care what you call him. He's B-Man. <laughs> it's just... Fucking Snake goes in there. Oh, fucking B-Man. Uh, that's fucked up. I'm just gonna... Bloosh. It's gonna be down here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking <bear. laughs> I just I fucking I got B Man's camo. I want to do a non lethal run of the game, and uh, or at least do all the non lethal bosses because it's an extra layer challenge. And I wanted that fucking camo, 
And it was so goddamn stupidly shitty because he had all those stupid fucking goo goo fruits or whatever. They were even they were even some a stupid name. Something like that. Uh, I ugh, no, that is a frustratingly shitty experience. And I and no, instead of go, rather than go loud as it were and and just use guns, I just fucking stopped playing the game. Now I will say there was a point in Snake Eater where I stopped fucking using my silenced weapon and my trank darts and stuff, and that was when they gave me. The machine gun. Because then you can be John Rambo. Yeah, I mean, he even does Rambo yell. Like, you start firing, he's like, ah! <laughs> It's amazing. <laughs> um, so what... I know that it seems like there was another game that I was pretty excited for. I mean, they announced a bunch of shit, but... Uh, Cuphead. I've been excited for that since they announced it when Xbox One wasn't a thing yet. I don't even know what the that. fuck that is. It's that beat-em-up where you're... It's like a... Like an old school cartoon. Where your head is a cup? Yeah. Oh! Fucking... I mean... But like, like you know those weird freaky cartoons, like the old Betty Boop ones, and the, the ones with the dancing, the spooky scary Wait, skeletons? Wait, I've seen this before. Yeah. I didn't know what that was. Okay, I mean, that doesn't look bad at all. Oh, yeah, well, it's two-player, too, so we can play it together. Okay, yeah, that's... Even, oh, then, yeah, we'll have a fucking great time. Yeah. We had a great time with Charlie Murder. Yeah, Charlie Murder was tight. Charlie Murder was fucking tight. <laughs> Um, I can't really think of anything else from E3 that I wanted to talk about. There's probably something, like, fucking amazing that we're, like, just completely forgetting. Or missed. I don't give a shit about the new Halo. I... Mm, I stopped caring at 3. I kind of thought about maybe no. firing up my old Halo games and seeing the maps we made. You know what? That's not true. I liked Reach. I liked the story from Reach. Reach was really cool. Reach was really cool, really well done. I liked the story. I loved the ending. The ending, the fucking survive... That's a great end for Yeah, that was really cool. That was I hate how overdone it got after that. But, yeah, and yeah. like, 4, I never played. I don't care. I, just, I don't care. The Continuing Adventures of Master Teeth. Master Teeth? Uh, Master Teeth. <laughs> Shut up, not... I love this character. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, I'm Master Teeth. <laughs> He's just fucking grills. <laughs> that's a good rapper name. Oh, that is a pretty good rapper name. Um, but I just... The continuing adventures of Master Chief. You can't see all the middle fingers I'm giving him. Whatever, dude. I'm just celebrating the glory of Master Chief. Um, once Bungie isn't developing those games, I don't care. Look, I'm sure the new development house, the Microsoft in development house, might have, like, a bunch of the same team from Bungie. I don't care. Uh, they don't. Bungie went off and made Destiny, which is like, as I'm given to understand it, um... Halo plus WoW? No, what's that game with the uh, Borderlands without any of the funny or storyline? So it's just WoW as a shooter? Yeah, it's shooter WoW. Oh. Well, let me just... Let me, let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something about me, listener. Um, yeah, the, the sweet epic loots. Not why I was playing Borderlands. No, it was because it was funny. We should get back into Borderlands too. We always say that and then we... Don't. <laughs> no, but it was fun. And I, we got those DLC characters. Like, that crazy motherfucker is fun. I'm sure he is. He looks like he's a good time. He's a riot. <laughs> I like the character I'm playing, actually, quite a bit. Yeah, I, I was okay with mine. The Gunzerker or whatever. Yes, talking about E3 2015, Borderlands 2. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> the two nerds... We give you a, a look into the past. We're like a portal to the past, because we're always a couple years behind everyone else. Yeah. Um, whatever. Some people like, you know, very well. Nostalgia. And you know, I, I honestly don't care. I mean, like sometimes when I'm putting up gameplay videos, I'm like, oh, this game came out months ago. Oh, this game is years old. Does anybody care? The answer is no, because you know, there's like fucking thirty of you, and half of you don't watch my videos. But uh, no problem with that. That's fine. You do you. But uh, like. What do I sit around and watch? When you turn on Batman and I want my spoiler-free experience, I'm going to put on headphones and I'm going to finish watching Cry play Call of Cthulhu Dark Corners of the Earth, which is a game that came out on the Xbox. And then I'm going to watch him uh, not even complete a run-through of Skyrim. Because I'm starting to get hyped to play some Skyrim again. It's been long enough, you think? Yeah, I think it's starting to have been long enough. Like, I had this awesome concept of a character who uh, is not a mage, but still becomes the head of the Mage's Guild. Oh, I've done that. Just, like, for funsies. Because so you can totally feel... can. Yeah, 
just so I can feel the role playing aspect of like I'm not. Why are you making me your king? I'm not. I don't do what you do. I. Uh, you have to. You have to do a little magic. Yeah, it's like three it. spells you need. You have to like cast a ward and yeah. cast a fire spell at one point, and it's all like in the introductory stuff. Once you get into the actual storyline of the Mages Guild, you don't actually have to cast any magic spells. And in matter of fact, for for the final boss fight, it's way better if you just take out a sword and gut that motherfucker. <laughs> it's way easier. But uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see what's up. So um, that's E3 coverage. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about it's been the wrestle zone. It has been uh, because the WWE has developed a new policy of sitting me in a chair and taping my eyes open and throwing wrestling into my face until I like it again. Um, uh, it's two pay per views a month is their policy at this point. Oh, for fuck's sake, guys! As I have shit aware. to do. Well, and like we like talking about other shit on the podcast. Ooh. I mean, this was cobbled together because I forgot. Actually, um, fair warning to you, listener. I need you to know this. It's if you're the kind of listener who has a, who gives a shit about the wrestling podcast and there's a pretty sharp dichotomy. Some of you do, some of you real don't. The section of the listener who does that part of your split personality. I want to let you know if Seth Rollins wins his match at this next pay per view, I'm done. I'm done in rings. I'm out. I can't. It's too stupid. Nope. And, you know, actually, I've been really upset with wrestling, and, and it all kind of came to a head Friday, for reasons I'm not going to get into. Um, but uh, I've been struggling to try to find something I want to watch. Because Chikara just doesn't take things seriously enough. I love it. But, like, that's not my weekly wrestling. No, it's good for, like, a good tongue-in-cheek takeoff on wrestling. I was watching WCW on the WWE Network and I stopped because I had to watch other wrestling. But now you I, don't. I might just start watching WCW again. It's a good reason to keep our network subscription. Yeah, um, because that helps support those hard workers. And I might not like the storylines that are going on. But that's not their fault. Yeah, that's not their fault. Um, they just, they give what they, they fucking read the words they're given. That's not their fault. Yep. But I just, like, it's Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar in a singles match. If Seth wins that match... I'm out. I'm done in rings. Yeah, and that's, I like yeah. Seth as a heel champion. I do. I want him to be champion until SummerSlam. But you can't book him in a singles match against Brock Lesnar and then have Seth Rollins be the one to take the Undertaker's heat. And I'm going to stop talking about wrestling because most of you don't give a shit. Right. Um, uh, what else we've been doing? I believe we mentioned this very super fucking briefly. Uh, we went and saw Mad Max Fury Road. Did we not? Oh, yeah, we didn't do just a podcast on this. No, because there wasn't like... It was going to be like our Guardians of the Galaxy podcast where the three of us just would not stop quoting Guardians of the Galaxy long enough to talk about the movie. Uh, uh, Fury Road was an incredible experience. An incredible experience, a great movie, um, and just... Probably in my top 20 favorite movies of all time. Yeah, I don't think it cracked the top 10. Yeah, I don't think it cracked the 10. But it's definitely something that you should take the time to watch. It's out of theaters now, so if you missed it, I'm sorry, because some of that shit is so cool. But... In September, when it comes out on DVD, pick it up. Yeah, it's it's well worth it. Rent it, at least. Fucking, it's good. Um, today, we finally saw Jurassic World. Yep, I liked it. Um, it was exactly the kind of mildly brainless popcorn flick that I come to expect from a Jurassic Park movie. It was Jurassic Park movie, number X, whatever. They have a formula, they followed it to the letter. It was good. I liked it. And I didn't go in expecting anything more. I didn't think I went in expecting anything, but I expected a Jurassic Park film. And that was a Jurassic Park film, for the most part. Um, I didn't... Hmm, let me preface with this. Uh, I did not really like the first hour. The first hour was full of shitty people being shitty to each other, with a couple of noteworthy standouts who were okay, decent human beings. Like Chris Pratt's character. Chris Pratt's character and uh, Gray, the little boy. He was okay. Yeah, his older brother's such a tool. Yeah, uh, you know. That's, I mean, he's... That's that age, you know. Yeah, he's tool yeah. age, and his character is, I'm a tool. Um, I was really disappointed by the, the dinosaur graphics. I wasn't. I liked them just fine. They like, were Jurassic Park style. In the first hour of the movie, I was. In the second hour, I, I barely even noticed. 
Like, it, it was good. I don't know what they were doing in the first hour of that movie, or if Nothing. I had just finally bought the ticket. And that's what happened. Or if it was because it was so calm and we were getting such easy looks at the dinosaurs, or I don't know what the deal was. Uh, the deal, I think, honestly, I think you're right. I think it's a Jurassic Park-style dinosaur. I love, there's a tiny moment in the movie I loved when they, they take the time, they take a little side and mention, you know, if these were purebred dinosaurs, they would probably look a lot different. To silence the people who go, but they don't have feathers! Yeah, well, fucking, they figured that out after the first Jurassic Park movie. We have a cannon. <laughs> Fuck it. Um, and you know what? I love that little moment, but it's because it was... I, it, in the beginning, they... I don't think I don't think this was intentional. I don't think the movie meant to do this, but I think what probably happened is you didn't like the people enough to draw you into the magic of the movie. So I wasn't... Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Maybe by, the, maybe by hour two, I had bought the ticket. And I was like, okay, let's finish this out. Because I really liked the last, like, 20, 30 minutes. That was really fun. I had a really good time. When it, when it became a Godzilla movie out of nowhere. Right. And and, and then the motherfucking T-Rex shows but up. But even, like, all the running around and the... I mean, like, I that wasn't... I wasn't, like, invested. I wasn't tense. But I was paying attention. I was... I was aware, you know? And I'm gonna be honest with you. I liked... I liked the beginning of that movie a lot. I liked the end. Don't get me wrong. This is not the movie's fault at all. We didn't get to the theater early enough. We usually go a lot earlier. It was our own fault. But we didn't have seats in the right section, so I had to sit way too close or way too far away. I chose way too close. By the last 30 minutes of that movie, I had a splitting migraine. I had a child kicking the uh, back of my seat through the entire film, so I feel you. I had a splitting migraine that made it in, like hard to focus. And I still like the end of that movie. I think I'd like it a lot more if I didn't have a splitting migraine by the end of it. I wouldn't care to watch it again. I probably will I, when it comes out on DVD or Netflix or whatever. I think it was the weakest of the four movies. Now, I've only seen three once, and it's been a long time ago, so I may two. rescind that. Two. Hands down, the weakest of those movies, two. I... Look, okay. I know it has lots of Jeff Goldblum. Right, but I'm... I, I, no, that's not what I was about to say. I mean, he does help tremendously, and this movie could have benefited so much from that. But um, when I think about Jurassic Park 2, I don't think about anything that happened after the dinosaur got on the boat. Oh, so a good check. So you just thought of like the first 40 minutes of the movie. I love that 40 minutes. So it was like a Jurassic Park. And every time that happens, I'm like, hmm, he gets on that boat, and that's the end of the movie. <laughs> When I sit down and watch it, I'm like, hmm, that's fucking stupid. But I really like the first portion where they're in the jungle, where they're on the island. Really tense moments. And I think because there are so many more characters that I give a fuck about in 2, that helps as well. I like Chris Pratt's character just fine. He was nice, and he had good morals. And I liked the kid. And the acting was good pretty much all around. Mm -hmm. But like in the first in the first portion of the movie, we are with... Bitchy aunt. We're with weird, overprotective, sad, divorced couple family who, at the same time, is also throwing their kids off to Dinosaur Island. Bye. Uh, I yeah. It, they 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 fill in the lines as to why that's happening. They're doing sure. it so that they can do their divorce while the kids are gone without causing drama. Uh, and bitchy aunt isn't so much bitchy aunt as she is just like busy aunt. Well, and a little. Like, like you happen, busy to you the happen, point of being a caricature. You you well, you happen to send me your fucking kids so you could get your divorce on the weekend when I'm trying to nail new clients to keep my theme park open, aunt. Sure, I'm not saying she doesn't have her reasons. I'm just saying I didn't like her very much. And that's fine. You're more than welcome to not like her. And like, and that's that's spoiler alert. By the end of the movie, when she's like, "Oh, a good guy, one of us now." Uh, I'm like, no, but she's still the same bitch from before. <laughs> she has made a couple of accomplishments, but the fabric of her character is where it was earlier. <laughs> she is going to put that pantsuit back on, put that phone back to her ear, and get back about business, because she has got some incredible fucking damage control to do to save this theme park. And you know what? <laughs> That's okay with me. Because it shows, it makes her not so much character development, but a layered character. Sure. A good person who sure. just happens to be very fucking busy, thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, I just, you know, but that's that's who we're spending time with. Um, I did like Mr. Monoverius, and I liked the lab techs, or the, the screen techs, whatever the fuck you want to call them. Um, and I liked Vincent D'Onofrio's performance. Because he's fucking Vincent D'Onofrio, go listen to our Daredevil podcast. <laughs> 
And um, he puts forth a, a command performance as blustery ex-military douche. Yeah, I mean, like, every time my brain went, this is ridiculous, nobody's really like that, I just started to think about Facebook posts that I've seen uh, lampooned on Tumblr and went, no, people are, this guy just got to the top of the pecking order. <laughs> as that guy. Um, I was really happy to see Ankylosaurus. Uh, that's my favorite dinosaur. And, like, I was very excited. Um... Spoiler, uh, I did not appreciate that Ankylosaurus went out like a bitch. I feel like that was one of those Worf moments for somebody who came in late to the next generation and is like, why is everyone talking about Worf like he's a badass, he just dies all the time? I don't think Ankylosaurus went out like a bitch. He fought, but he just, he could have fought better. He could have taken a chunk. Those fucking things are tanks. And that dinosaur was just like, mm, pff, fuck you, eat, eat. Well, the thing is, <laughs> like, but it makes sense. Sure. Like, because the fucking dinosaur, major spoiler alert, uh... Feel free to turn off the podcast at this point. Um, but the 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 Irex, who's the villain, by the way. All the phones are Samsung in that movie. I fucking love that the Irex is the bad guy. The white ass Irex uh, is a super smart raptor. It's a fucking. It's they they sell in the Jurassic Park movies that raptors are basically fucking people. Right. So it's like, yeah, you're a tank and you're really heavy, but I'm like T Rex strong and I actually have grabby arms, so I just grab your edge and flip you over. I did like during the the fight at the end of the movie. And to that, that motherfucker was boxing the T Rex. <laughs> like, and like come fucking palm in his go? face and shit. You want to go, Rich? You want to go? That was a really good monster fight. I, yeah. I mean, like it. I still didn't really care for the movie. Again, I probably won't watch it again. All the good dinosaurs team up to fight the IRX. But yeah, that was tight. I like that. And it was fun. Yeah, uh, the thing that I wanted to mention was that the reason why I don't think the Ankylosaurus went out like a bitch is because he was the first and only dinosaur until the fucking T-Rex to do any noticeable damage. That That's day. fair. Because he was like, Mer, fuck off, and he swung his club tail, and it was like, and it, and it like knocked that fucker down, and he went he went down and had to get back up. <laughs> and then Kylosaurus was like, I'm out of here, and it was like, no, flip. You're that fucking thing in Halo, and I'm really good at flipping shit. Nah. Whatever. I like Ankylosaurus. I was, I was thrilled to see it. The, the whole, like, the, the thing with the pterodactyls and stuff. But, you know, there were just so many points in that movie where I was Bill Paxton. Why would you do that? Yeah, just constantly. That's another fucking inside joke. I'm going to say it real quick because we're nearing the end of the podcast here. But uh, uh, the Big Love, uh, the HBO series about yeah. um, a polygamous family in, who are Mormons, um, is basically best summarized by Bill Paxton's character trying to live his fucking life while all the people around him make crazy fucking stupid decisions just to fuck with his little world Quote unquote accidentally. So Bill Paxton's reaction in basically every scene is either, yay, things are finally going well for me, or why would you do that? Why, why would you do that? It, it's, it's become a colloquialism of just a, a base sort of, I don't, I've lost the ability to. How I, I cannot even why you would do this thing. <laughs> this is just beyond. Like, the Irex gets out in the first place because he snookers a bunch of the fucking park employees into thinking it escaped. So to check to see if they escaped, they open the fucking big ass door. Well, that wasn't even it. It's like no, no, that's yeah. Right. They went in and checked, and and then like the fat guy's like, oh, oh, I want to get out of here. So he opens the T Rex, well, the, you know, the, the dinosaur door. Because the dinosaur is between him and the regular people sized door because it's a smart ass predator. So it got in between them before it revealed itself, and then. He was like, well, my life is more important than all the 20,000 people at this park. Beep, 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 open the T-Rex door. I mean, it's not, again, I'm not going to say that it's not realistic. I know plenty of motherfuckers who would doom thousands to try and save For the slim kid. hope that they're going to get away from this genetically but, engineered apex mutant monster predator. But this fucking donut-eating motherfucker, just like, I look at him and go, you shit. You shit of a human. I can't tell you how many times I turned to Brandy and said, I can't wait until they die horribly. <laughs> Just cannot tell you how many times. But the acting was good. The writing was okay. Uh, it was a it was a Jaws style you know event movie. Yeah, it was popcorn. Yeah, it was it, it was, was fine. It was it's a big summer blockbuster. It busts some blocks and I had way more fun when I went and saw the original Jurassic Park when they re released it. Yeah, I thought that's that was fair. a much better feature. And the first part of Jurassic Park two, I like a hell of a lot more. Three kind of bored me, but I blame that on the company I kept at the time because somebody convinced me that the kids died. So, so I did. was really mad that they spoiled that for me. So you went in and... 
And they tried to reverse spoil it, and no, that's not. Yeah, that no, work I just on got you. mad, and that I doesn't was work like, on you. No, fuck. But uh, we did kind of want to talk a little bit about like trilogies and more movies and stuff. What but happens when you, you know make what? it into a, a series? But when the nerds get talking, they get chatty. Well, you know, somebody said the magic word, so that was a half hour of the podcast right there. Hey, to be fair, it wasn't about Batman. It was about the car. I didn't quack what about Batman. Who, whose car was it? It's Batman. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. Hey, you know what? Fuck. If I, I'm going to use that in the future. Like, if there's a podcast that's going poorly and I'm like, shit, it's not... Hey, the boy, how about that Batman? And you'd be like, fucking Batman. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast was about a mediocre movie we saw, but now it's about Batman. <laughs> how, how do you think Batman could have made this movie better? Let me give you... It's papers, Russell, as you pull out <laughs> a pre-written document. Uh, fucking cited references. <laughs> I would love to tell you that won't work. Because... Because it will, and I'd rather you not you not take advantage of me like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, shit. Uh, so next week, uh, we'll probably be coming to you with something WWE related. I believe there is a pay-per-view next week. Uh, I believe that's when the mat- the new pay-per-view happens. But hopefully I will have remembered to get some prep time between now and then. So that all the cool ideas we actually have for podcasts can come to fruition without us going, Feck, at the last <laughs> second. <laughs> <sighs> you would think, since we do one of these every week, they wouldn't sneak up on us. You'd be wrong. <laughs> Man, Friday just... Friday was a day. <laughs> Friday was a day. And, just, no, not for the reason you think. Oh, no, that was... That was, that was good, good news. That was good news. There was I started that day off with some great fucking news. Yep, but that's as far as we'll go because we don't get political on the yeah, Tuner's podcast. Don't. But, uh... It's, uh... It's kind of like saying, you know, I don't want to name any names here, but, uh... uh T-Boy. Mm, let's call him The B. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think he's about to take us out. Yeah, yeah, I am. Everything's better when nerds talk about it. Especially Batman and dinosaurs. Woo! Fuck it, let's go!